everybody and welcome to the podcast. I have no clue what episode we're on but sure it doesn't matter. I'm Emma but I'm sure you know that and if you don't my stuff will be down below. So this is mainly a knitting podcast uh, and some other bits and pieces now and again. So I am just going to dive straight in. I don't want to dilly dally too much because the longer the episode the longer it takes to upload and sometimes it's horrendously long around here, uh, which is Northern Ireland, if you didn't know that. Um, I think it's probably just my internet though. So I'm just going to dive straight in and uh, I have an FO, well half an FO, one sock, does that count? So this sock, I've been knitting this for so long, like maybe like two or three months. Um, it started off as a swatch, so this here bit was supposed to be a swatch because I was trying to find the best gauge for socks and um, it started as a swatch and I was like oh I might as well just continue on and make it into a sock. So the gauge on this is something like 38 stitches per 10 centimeters um, and according to my friend Albina McLaughlin, she says that 35 stitches per 10 centimetres should give good wear. I'm always on the search for more tips how to knit the socks more robustly. So to achieve that gauge I used a 1.75 millimetre needle and I cast on 64 stitches and I did just a normal slip stitch heel and the yarn is my natural sock yarn which is 50% BFL, 50% Chivia uh, and it's spun in the UK and naturally dyed by me and this colourway is Honeysuckle and I just did a heel flap and gusset and just like just like a normal toe decrease so I've knitted one sock, it took me absolutely ages, um, obviously because it started as a swatch there's no ribbon at the top which is a bit of an error so what I might do is um, either go around pick up the stitches or rip out, rip out or cut a little bit and then knit up the ribbon and then cast off again just so that I have, <laughs> so that it's better for a sock. <clears throat> I'm really pleased with how this turned out and I have it on my little B, uh, P4 Chen uh, sock bloggers which are really pretty. Patricia Ann. So yes this is kind of a, it's a finished object but it's only one half of the pair so for ages there my sock mojo had just completely completely gone and I'm so glad that it's kind of back and that I got this finished because I really need some more hand knitted socks in my wardrobe. So this is one thing. Um, I have also <laughs> got a, another sock to show you. <laughs> this one I started knitting this around Christmas I think and on the knitting retreat that I held with um, Key of Hawthorne Cottage Craft, I had seen a few people wearing three by one rib socks on the retreat and I was like, whoa, I have never knitted a three by one rib sock. So um, I kind of um, went through my stash to see what I had. I mean, of course I could have used my own yarn, but sometimes it's nice to use up something in your stash. So I picked out two yarns that I had. I had this, um, this one here is naturally dyed by Olan, Jess, um, down in County Cavan. Uh, I think it's BFL. Um, I don't think there's any nylon on it. It, it might be super wash, I'm not sure. And this one here is by Gregoria Fibers and it is 75-25 merino nylon I think. So it'd be really interesting to see how this compares to this in terms of wire. Um, so I did pretty much the same thing on this, 64 stitches, 
So actually these are on a two millimeter needle. They might be a bit roomier than this, but the, I feel like the yarn is like a bit thinner than my yarn. So not, not sure how that, how it'll be. But if I was doing this again, I would do them on the 1.75, but they feel nice and cozy. I don't know if it's the rib or what. So yeah, I just did a three by one rib down to the heel. I uh, just did a slip stitch heel and just like a normal, I don't know what this type of heel is called, it's the one I always do, it's just you do the short rows and then you just, uh, yeah, it's really easy, I don't know, I always do the same one. And um, here I'm just keeping it plain, I don't know uh, on, normal on normal rib socks if the whole way around is also ribbed on the foot. Um, but I've, I've just got um, the top of the foot ribbed and then I will soon be changing colours for the toe. And I have to say now, the difference in the needles for these was quite vast. For these ones I used the carbon fibre, I think they're Knit Pro double pointed needles. And they were quite good, well I thought they were quite good until I started knitting with these, one, these ones here, which are, I don't know what make they are but they're not carbon fibre, I'm pretty sure. Oh, they're Haya Haya, that's what they are. And they have like no bend in them, which I absolutely love, whereas the carbon fibre ones are quite bendy. And I also find that wooden needles, when they get down to that size, are so, so bendy, and I just don't really like that. It annoys me a bit. I like a good sort of firm needle. So I don't know if these are steel or what they are, but I really appreciate the nice firm needle so um, and obviously like that can change your gauge how like bendy or firm the needle is never mind the needle size so that is my second sock um my next thing is my kume sweater which you're going to be very impressed by because i have got both arms in and, and I am just kind of knitting the collar, so it's all crumbled up, it's been stuffed in the bag. But so yeah, gonna knit the collar and then it's gonna be ready for the steak. So to prepare for the steak, I have to do a crochet thing all along here. And then I get to cut. And then I have to find some tape, probably some sort of tape to put in the inside. Um, I haven't majorly researched how to do a steak but I'm going to kind of research that a bit before I do it but I know I watched a video about picking up and knit doing a crochet thing up this to stop it unraveling because this yarn for this is not a particularly sticky yarn at all it's the natural sock DK and it is again 50% BFL 50% TVA but it's a DK weight rather than a the four ply which is good for socks also doesn't have uh, as high of a twist so it has really nice stitch definition on the cables um, and uh, I love the colour I dyed it with nails um, I did make a mistake as maybe you can see if you're the eagle eyed among you will see my mistake and um, the mistake is also on the back but it's symmetrical, so maybe that's okay. I don't know. So I am not going to rip it back at all. So it's definitely like longer than a lot of my other jumpers. It will probably fit more like a jacket, I would imagine, than just a normal like cardigan. But yeah, this has been like a really nice knit. Um, just quite relaxing and quite just sort of I've never knitted a cardigan I don't own any other cardigans apart from my penguino which isn't really a cardigan because there's no like fastenings or buttons or anything so this is my first real cardigan I think if I was going to knit it again I've got to be honest I would use a different yarn just because I think something slightly stickier just works better for garments like something that's a bit more like fibrous I mean this is like really soft um, but I prefer something a little bit more 
just for you know jumpers and garments I'd probably use something like my BFL Gotland iron weight which I will have in the next shop update I think that would be so perfect for this project um, because it's it's really soft but it's also got it's like a wee bit hairy so it would just be so cozy I think it would be really nice um, so yeah this is this and I'm not going to tell you my mistake you can guess in the comments below <laughs> I'm just I'll give you a little close-up just in case that helps So yeah, you can have fun trying to spot the spot the mistake. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm hoping to have this done in the next couple of weeks. There's not much left to do apart from knitting the collar, so that's pretty good. Um, what are my knitting dreams? My knitting dreams are more socks. I want to knit more socks. Um, I need more knitted socks in my wardrobe because I don't actually have that many at all and I would like some more and I wear socks every day and it's nice to have a little sash ready for the winter so um that is one thing I definitely have in my mind um once I finish my kume sweater I'm going to start a, a project for my husband I'm going to knit him a nurtured sweater um, he wants it full length, not like my cropped one. His belly would be very cold. <laughs> um, and I am going to knit it in my BFL Massim Iron Weight in the mustard green colourway. So I've dyed the yarn, I've swatched, I've got the needle size, I'm good to go. But I just need to finish some things first. Um, there's too many projects, too many things going on in my head that I want to do. I have also promised my dad a sweater, so, um, and he wants it in like a, a lightweight, he calls it lightweight, um, which is four ply, which is basically going to take months probably, but um, I'm also just going to make up a pattern which will keep it kind of fun and interesting, and I'm thinking what I'll do is bottom up, 100% I'm a bottom up girl. And I'm thinking a nice cable here would be nice, or maybe up here. And then maybe just raglan and just like a round neck. And I hope to knit this in one of my upcoming limited edition bases, which will hopefully be with me um, maybe before the end of the year, within within a year, we'll say within a year. I have sent off so many things to the mill, but this is me totally going on a tangent here. Some really interesting and different breeds that I have sourced from around Northern Ireland. And I am so excited um, to see how they come back. A lot of naturally coloured fleeces. Um, kind of browns, blacks, greys, um, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I'll probably choose one of those for that particular project, which I'm hoping that I get it cast on before the end of the year. That would be, that would be good. Um, I also have two more projects. I have, uh, I had in mind since like halfway through last year that I wanted to spin and knit my own, um, my own sweater. I've, I used to do a lot more spinning than I do now and um, I, I've i never spun enough to knit a, like a sweater or a jumper with it so that's one thing I've been wanting to do for so long and I was clearing out, well I wasn't clearing out, I was just going through my wool pantry or stash or whatever you want to call it and uh, I came across a scheme that I had uh, spun up of um, what was it? Oh no. The Herdwick, Herdwick. I had spun up and absolutely fell in love with it again. And I just thought, this is what I want to knit my hand spun jumper in. 
So what I might do is plan for that to be my winter project but that is what I did last year and no it didn't happen <laughs> but I think I would like to get into spinning a little bit more but I've sort of neglected it in the last year. Um, I think it would be a nice meditative practice to get into and just something that's different from knitting that doesn't require as much thought and you can just kind of get into it. Um, so that's that's that project and another one is I have my patchwork quilt is hanging up over the banister of the stairs and I have it all pinned together I decided not to use the basting spray in the end because a I couldn't find it and b I didn't want to like breathe in all the fumes so I have it pinned together I'm ready to start quilting it but I just haven't done anything and also I'm struggling to know how to store it between times just because it's so big so I'm not sure if I should roll it up maybe and find like somewhere to put it but it would need to be somewhere flat because I'll probably only want to do like one square at a time and in fact I'd be doing very well if I did one square at a time I'm just going to do big big stitches I think that'll look really cool it'll have a nice like homespun look so yeah, so I have got some stuff coming up. I have the Rural Irish Christmas um, mini skein sets. So that will be 12 mini skeins. Uh, they will be some colours from the full advent and some different ones probably. Uh, it will also have a pattern designed by me and it will have some stitch markers in it um so those will go for sale along with um i'm going to do uh, a rural irish christmas sock sets as well um so 120 grams you can open them on christmas day or just whenever you want really and i think i'm going to make those two colors from the full advent i know which two and they look really nice together i kept like seeing them together and was like I need to like this needs to be the sock set so um yeah if you didn't know before the um the colors i had in mind for the full advent i have a, a whole episode about it so you can just go back and watch it but just to give you a quick idea it was kind of rusty reds muted greens a few pastels some pinks and like dark kind of grays so um obviously the mini advent being smaller can't have like all like everything in it but it will have elements of that and maybe something a little bit different so yeah so that's that that is coming on the 23rd of July 8 p.m gmt plus one we're in the summertime uh the clocks are forward here so I will put a countdown timer in my Instagram story so you can it'll remind you um if you set it it'll remind you what time it will go live at again um i've put up as many as i can but there's only so much i can make without going crazy so um all i can say is be ready for it and um i won't be making any more just because no just no more <laughs> can't do it um so those will ship out in i'm hoping the start of october just because uh, at the moment the postage is just taking that bit longer and i want to make sure they get to you all on time and um, the next shop update will be i hope maybe at the end of the month but i'm so busy with the advent stuff that i'm kind of like my head's kind of crazy at the moment so um i'll probably decide tomorrow what date to do that on i have quite a bit of stuff sitting ready for that it might it might go to the start of august depends how i get on so my new base the dorset alpaca base which is approximately approximately 80 percent dorset 20 percent alpaca i'm dying it up at the minute for the next update i have loads of different colors i'm doing an indigo dye day next week so I hope to do some blues and greens as well for that and um, 
I've done a quite a large range of colors. I have dyed up almost every skein that I had of it. I'm not even sure how many I had. I maybe had like not very many compared to the Cheviot, which is all sold out now. Maybe a couple of hundred skeins. So after that, it's gone. I won't be doing that base again. And in other news, I will be um, heading down to see Jess Olan, who was talking about that's her yarn there. I'm going to visit her tomorrow. I am leaving off some fleeces to get spun at her new mill, which is in County Cabin. It's about two and a half hours away. And um, me and my dad are gonna go and take the trailer and it's all in the trailer now. It's completely full. And um, we're gonna just make a day of it, I think. So um, it'll be really interesting. Um, I don't know if I'm getting the full tour tomorrow or not, but um, I think when I collect the fleeces, Jess is gonna show me around and I'm gonna do a little podcast with her and she might give us a little tour of um, her mill and maybe a little bit of her dye studio, I don't know. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can stay tuned and subscribe as they say. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that's all I have for today. I'm trying not to make it too long because I said earlier about the internet. And I hope you enjoy all the nice uh, walk, beachy footage. Um, I took loads of it when I was out on Monday. It was a bank holiday, so we went for a really, really long walk. It was something like six and a half miles. Um, and we got an amazing pizza at um, Boffy Coffee. So if you're around the North Coast, it is so good. So, so good. And they have like outside seating and stuff. So it's really nice. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed the this episode and I will see you next time.